but uh, we'll walk around the truck real quick. So we got a rebuilt C15 Cat rated at 550 horsepower. We got an 18 speed transmission on a 320 inch wheelbase. And wheelbase is measured from the center of the front wheel to the middle of the duals, which is right there. All right, I'm back on the road. Um, I'm actually over here in Effingham, Illinois, Illinois, at Joe's Oil Change Shop. We're gonna get the oil changed in this uh, new to me orange truck, just so I know that it's done. Um, let's see, got a lot of work done at home. I was home, I was off for quite a while, but uh, got a lot of work done. I'm trying to make my way back to Louisville to get the truck inspected so I can uh, haul loads. I haven't hauled a load yet with this truck. Did a lot of work to the truck. Uh, if it shows up, these seats that are in here, they came out of the 2013 truck. This truck here is a 2001 379 with, I look in the mirror, a 132 inch double eagle sleeper. Uh, cleaned up the dash. I put my little uh, dump valve switch in, which is right there. Um, there's all kinds of switches and whatnot. Uh, this is an old school uh, idle shutoff switch here. So you turn this, and it's like a timer that you use in the kitchen, and it'll shut the truck off. But uh, Bailey's doing good. All right, let's go in the sleeper here. Oh, okay. So this is a 132 inch double eagle sleeper made back in 2001. So this sleeper is 20 years old and it's in pretty good shape. I did some work to it. Um, I put a refrigerator in. So we've got a nice big refrigerator, freezer. Oop. Um, over in this area here, there used to be a wardrobe closet right here. I took it out and I put a desk in. So I bought this piece of countertop at Lowe's, cut it down to fit in there. And then I got my desk chair. That was one of the important things when I was looking at sleepers is I wanted to be able to put a, uh, a desk in there. Uh, this right here is my T-Mobile Wi-Fi that I use, pay $50 a month. Got a window up in the front up here. You can see right there. Got a little shade over it. Uh, let's see, we'll keep going down this side. This here is the bathroom shower. It just works just like an RV. Works just like an RV shower. You can see right there. And then it's got a little toilet. Right there is what they call a cassette toilet. But uh, it's got a, uh, I think it's a five gallon hot water tank and it got about a 50 gallon fresh water tank. So I can take uh, quite a few hot showers. Uh, full size bed. I installed the TV back there, flat screen. Now, several years ago or when this truck was first made, flat screen TVs were, weren't even a, a thing. And this used to have like a shelf thing. Somebody's took it out. Hey, you know, it's got a couple flaws on the on the vinyl and whatnot, but uh, like I said, it's a 20-year-old truck. And it, overall, it's in pretty good shape. Air conditioning unit up on the top there. Um, here, hey, hang on one second. Let me see if it works. You see that phone right there? That used to be like an intercom system to talk to the front up here. Let me see if it still works. The uh, The phone is gone. But let me see here. I'm gonna put you guys back here so you can hear. Let's see where we go. Let me turn the key on. Oh no! Oh, I thought it would work. I was messing with it. I was messing with it when I was working on the truck, and I I got that phone to ring. <laughs> but uh, so this is like an old school alarm clock. 
remember 20 years ago this was small didn't have little tiny things uh, this is the bunk heating and cooling unit HVAC unit not the rooftop generator light switches turn the lights on and off um, I put a microwave in I hung the microwave up here out of the way did that little medicine cabinet right there sink hot water this comes out do dishes and whatnot um, this here is controls for generator and this storage I don't know if I talked about Bailey's little crate I put that in that was one reason why I raised the refrigerator up was uh, to get that so Bailey could have a little space and I made all I was pretty proud of this refrigerator I made, I made all this trim goes around here and put that in but that's the sleeper and pretty much self-contained so uh, the truck is got a 320 inch wheelbase the white truck had a 265 inch wheelbase so uh, it's a little bit longer but anyway I will do more we'll go outside let me get the oil changed we're gonna get the truck washed and uh, we'll go outside look around and then make our way down to Louisville all right we got the oil changed and we got the truck washed I tried to find somewhere a little quiet where we could do this we're at the Petro but uh, we'll walk around the truck real quick so we got a rebuilt c15 cat rated at 550 horsepower we got an 18 speed transmission that's uh, condensation coming from the air conditioning you see leaking right there on a 320 inch wheelbase and wheelbase is measured from the center of the front wheel to the middle of the duals which is right there so sleepers 132 inches and yes you know, my new exhaust I put on while I was at home there looks pretty good so the truck has what they call a cassette toilet which is in this little door right here so I showed you earlier the toilet do your business and then it comes out and then this little piece right here pulls out empty it out take it to a dump station dump it out so and then the sleeper right there this is the generator So we got a, a three-cylinder Kubota, runs at 1800 RPM, 7500 watt generator, so that, pretty good. I changed all the filters, I, uh, I washed it, took the cover off, washed everything. So I like my stuff nice and clean. Uh, put the headache rack on, I think you guys saw that. Mercer requires we have a headache rack. So, um, this truck came with 24.5 low pro tires. I changed everything over to 22.5s, tall, 11R 22.5s. The tire height is the same as a low pro tire, but uh, somebody out racing on the interstate. But um, the tall 11R 22.5s are easier to find and cheaper than low pro 22 fives let's see what else is going on here trailer while i was at home i put four brand new trailer tires on on this rear axle here since i i put new steer tires on here it says i was at the tire shop i went ahead and had them put some trailer tires on so i don't have to worry about tires for a while this uh, back axle on the spread takes a beating, even with the dump valve, because it's always sliding around. And we'll go back over here. You can see the air conditioning unit up on the top, just like an RV. This here is just a storage box, tools, a little ladder. I, put, I brought that little ladder. 
one drawback is is stepping up to get up on the trailer so I brought that little ladder to uh, help me get on the trailer uh, inside here it's kind of a mess that's the water heater the water the heat exchanger for the water heater that's the water tank right there I think it's about a 50 gallon tank and I'll go back over to the other side and show you so we carry 400 gallons of diesel but uh, I won't be carrying that much diesel no need for me unless I'm light and I'm somewhere I can get some cheap diesel so let me go over here I'll show you how I feel to tank up so this is the HVAC unit that I was talking about for the uh, the bunk so this is like the bunk heating and cooling system when the truck is running and this is the bunk heating system when the generator is running so this is the water tank right there and you take this hose right here hook it to that hose to a faucet and fill up the water tank I had to uh, make these little filters I bought this stuff at Lowe's to make these little filters for that but uh, I don't know if I said it before one of the biggest things that I'm trying not to do since uh, I have so much storage space is be a pack rat. I don't want to be a pack rat. Truck looks good. I did replace the belts while I was at home. So, all right, uh, we got to make a way over to Louisville, get the truck inspected, and uh, let's go see if we can try to make some money with this truck. All right, it's the end of the day. We made it over here to uh, Louisville, to Mercer Town. I've uh, already had dinner. I've already took a shower. Bailey's crashed out on the bed. I'm uh, getting ready to uh, edit my first video here on my little desk. Um, and I thought I would talk to you guys real quick while I'm doing this. Hang on one second. So, I will give people a little bit of advice if you're planning on buying an older truck you better know how to fix stuff and uh, chase down electrical problems um, I've had a bunch of little issues on this truck that I've had to chase down um, I had tonight I have one or tonight today the alternator overcharged it was charging up to 15 volts I went to Peterbilt bought an alternator changed it this afternoon come to find out somebody had put the wrong alternator on this truck at some time at one point but I used the VIN number at Peterbilt and I got the right alternator on this truck but it's just a little thing that if you're planning on buying an older truck you better know how to fix stuff um, I hooked up my scanner to this truck and I wanted to run some numbers by you so this truck has uh, according to the computer on the truck 1,800,000 miles on it 1.8 million has a total of 34,000 hours 34,127 it gives you an average mile per hour for the lifespan of this truck this truck's 20 years old of 52 miles an hour that is really really good my white Peterbilt is at 36 Six thirty-five miles per hour that 2013 Peterbilt that was down to 28 so the lower your average mile per hour means the more the truck was idled uh, this truck came from the factory was built with this big sleeper it's had a generator on it ever since and that's one reason why it has a high mile per uh, average um, also, according to the computer, it could calculate how many gallons of fuel this truck has used. Uh, this truck used 289,000 gallons of fuel for the life of the truck. That is a lifetime average of 6.3 miles per gallon. That's really good for as big as this truck is. So I don't think this truck really ever worked hard pulling a lot of weight. Um, so, but uh, I thought those numbers were interesting. 
Uh, let's see, I did run through inspection. Got a couple little issues going to take care of tomorrow. Um, so hopefully I talked to Katie. Um, oh, wait. I've had people ask about the weight of this truck. Hang on one second. Okay. So my trailer weighs 11,000 pounds. So that's my trailer with all the equipment, the boxes, and all my equipment in there weighs 11,000 pounds. The, this truck with 400 gallons of fuel and a full water tank, total weight of the tractor and the trailer, uh, 37,400 pounds. So that works out to uh, 42,600 pounds of what I could carry full of fuel. And I most likely will not be running around full of fuel. So this weight ticket is half a tank of fuel and about half water. And it's at 35,660. So 44, 44,000. A lot of people were concerned about how heavy this truck was. I talked to Katie. Katie's got several other guys that have big sleepers. Uh, talked to Katie, and um, uh, she says, as long as I can stay above 40,000, I'll be all right. She said, if I drop down below 40,000, then I might have a hard time finding freight. But if I stay at 40,000 or above, so 42, 43, I should be okay. And I'm probably going to be running a little different. I uh, won't be doing so much steel, stuff like that, heavy stuff. But uh, Katie feels confident. And I'm pretty uh, confident in her. She's got some other guys that run big sleepers. She was telling me some of the numbers they do. And uh, some of their numbers are pretty impressive. So uh, I feel pretty confident that uh, we'll do pretty good. So anyway, I'm going to get ready to make first video here on my little desk Bailey's uh, resting right there I got the uh, generator and air conditioner off so you guys can hear me but uh, so anyway we'll get back in the groove uh, and uh, get going so hopefully tomorrow's Wednesday hopefully we'll be on the road Friday get a good load for over the weekend so thanks for watching talk to you later